All right, you guys, welcome back to the Turn 14 Distribution Big Mike Edition DC5 Street Build. Let's get straight into it. I'm here at Project Import in Orange, California. That's my boy Kiet. We already have the chassis up on the lift, getting ready to get this suspension installation going. We are going to do front and rear sway bars from White Line. You can see these part numbers clear right here. You guys look at this setup front and rear matching sway bars and i'm also going to be running these buddy club sports spec dampers okay this is what we're going to do the fundamentals you don't need much more than this to match up with the sway bars you have these end links right here once again check out white lines website these are the part numbers you need right there in addition with this particular type of suspension that's on the dc5 if you go too low you have to adjust and deal with certain things and extended ball joints will help you with that if needed so there it is this is what we're gonna run let's get right into it we're gonna start by getting these crusty coilovers out popping the ball joints you guys can see you know it needs some cleaning and i would typically want to just take everything apart and and have everything degreased and then powder coated and those types of things but when you're picking up a higher mileage car a used chassis this is to be expected and that's not always time effective and cost effective so right here you can see these crusty sway bar end links the oem front sway bar i'm really excited to at least address these things right here on the front of the car first to uh to change up this whole setup the white line bars are a powder coated silver which ma matches the car really nicely so kiet was working on that side the other side is almost out and you can see how this it's just dirty and it's just going to be amazing to switch it switch it all out with new bushings and a new sway bar so we are uh, working on getting everything situated here at the shop in orange california so once again big shout out to kiet right there you can see him on the other side working and we're going to take this coilover out this side's out it's out of the way and he's on the other side so that we can put in the buddy club sport spec n plus dampers i apologize for the lighting i'm gonna get better on it but here we go guys all right so this is one of the fronts the thing that's really cool about these is they come preloaded and you don't really need to touch that at all you just want to get your height situated so um it's a nice affordable uh, aggressive coilover so this is a bit aggressive the spring rates on the buddy club are 10 uh, front 14 rear so that might be a, a little bit uh, aggressive for some people but it allows for you that want to do weekend track days and things like that to have something really useful so uh, we have one of them right here in the wheel well we're getting close we're getting situated this is the shop dog you have, you know if you have a shop dog you got to give her love um what am i gonna say man it's dogs we all love dogs little booty scratches show love and the thing that's dope about this shop i'm gonna show you guys right now is they don't just build imports peep it listen to that there is 2000 you can hear the cam lobe they build crazy chevys at this shop a bunch of corvettes you can hear it i mean it's called project import but they can legitimately build you anything you can hear that one and that's one of many corvettes that they uh, build up at the shop so there you go that's an example of some of that let's get back to the car right now well this is their s2000 for those of you guys that watch global time attack super lap battle you've seen them but what they're doing now is getting ready for Pike's Peak. They're rebuilding and building and advancing the car to be ready and safe to attack that race, which is crazy. So Pike's Peak Hill Climb, that's what they're working on right now. Okay, so we've got the chassis up in the air and finishing up the front before we get to the rear here, which you can see. You know, the rear lower control arms, I'm probably going to end up running some hard race ones, but... You know, let's get back to the front. We're about to pull out the front sway bar, get rid of these bushings, go with the uh, new aftermarket ones, and we'll start by getting rid of all that. It's just, I really want to clean the undercarriage of the car, and I'm probably gonna do that next, but let's drop the front sway and put in the new, 
there it is the new front sway bar it's got all the grease all over it i'm going to clean that up but that's silver it looks so much better new bushings new end links right there compared to how it looks in the rear i cannot wait to get this all situated get the ride height dialed in and, and be able to drive the car and give you guys the impressions of the changes that happen when you do something as simple as these things you guys this is some of the most underrated stuff you know guys who have been around know but for a lot of you the first thing people do is jump straight into wheels and tires and coilovers and i get it but things like your rear sway bar especially on a front wheel drive car guys do the rear sway bar i chose to do the front and the rear as a set but do the rear at a bare minimum buddy club coilovers are going into the rear we're gonna get everything situated here you know once again big shout out to kiet we're getting the rear situated we still have to dial in the height a lot and figure out where i want it i'm not really into being very slammed especially with these coilovers having the aggressive spring rate that they have 10k front 14k rear is, is a bit on the aggressive side so we'll figure out the dampening if i want to go in the middle and maybe go all the way down and figure it out but uh we'll get this rear sway bar in there new bushings they're already greased up and lubricated you reuse the the d brackets your oem d brackets um and then there's I had to see old girl out here taking a break. She was chilling. Hi, girl. I love dogs, so I had to show her some love. And, um, you know, just take a breather outside real quick. My dude, Kiet, is inside grinding. Uh, speaking of grinding, this is one of the other homies. He's been there for a long time. He's also a racer, and he's prepping some metal for one of the customer's cars. <laughs> it's actually this really cool 300ZX twin turbo right there, the red one. You can see an MR2, a 350Z, the Race S2000. They have this drift project that they're that they're doing for some customer. You can see how the variety is. And Kiet's over here on the car, S2000s, another Corvette. It's super diverse and they're building street cars and race cars galore. Okay, this is the last of the fronts. One side is done, here's the other. That's the locking perch. Preload is already set. Dampening adjustability is on the bottom of these buddy clubs. And uh, we've kind of eyeballed it, measured, and uh, got things situated to where I think I'll be happy. So we're gonna get that situated. But we had to stop and take a breather because we ran into some issues. I'll elaborate in a moment. But I always like to uh, look around and appreciate all of the different chassis and builds that Project Import is working on. As you can see, it's dark outside. So quick breather before we get into these issues. Okay, so I wanna give you guys an update. There has been a lot going on. Kiet over here at Project Import has been on this for a substantial amount of time, hours longer than what was initially thought. And that's kind of how cars go. But the point is even something as little as oh, I leaned on the valve cover and I'm gonna clean it, when there's already extra work to do is kind of a testament to the way he is. I mean, the time and energy to do something like that is it's not necessary at all when there's far more important things like what we've been dealing with, with the suspension. There've been a lot of adjustments that had to be made over and over and over again to the Buddy Club and plus coilovers to get the car to where I'm happy with it and he's happy that I'm happy and it could have been it could have been okay a couple of times but I was just like you know what no 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 let's get it you know right what I believe is right and 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 he he stuck with me on that so there's definitely a lot of adjustments that had to go into that we're at a point now where we're situated we're going to mess with the toe he's going to actually align it here because the toe got changed of course with the front I'll go over here and show you guys this last motor mount we're going to do for the Hasport mounts big shout out to Brian at Hasport we're going to do the last mount right now it kind of got lost in the midst of all the work that needed to be done but we have this guy right here so we 
have this mount right here. This is gonna go in right now. The white line front and rear sway bar set, 24 millimeter two-way adjustable sway bars are in. The Buddy Club N Plus coilovers are situated right height is set. Everything is locked. The preload is in. It's in a very good place, but the, you have to align it because the toe is totally off. The vibration from that mount that, that needs to be changed is gonna be addressed right now. And, and there's just that much more going on. And I mean, my engine looks cleaner than it has in I wish I could do a little more. Six months, to be very honest with you. Oh, I didn't even mention it. So we're underneath the car doing the suspension and he's just like, you know, looking at other things and my eye catches some shininess. And what is the shininess? The shininess is an oil leak. And I'm just like, where is it? He shines the light, finds it. VTEC solenoid, not just the regular one, but the O-ring on top. Quickly went and ordered one. It came in uh, while the suspension was getting done. Changed the VTEC solenoid so there's no leak there. Did an oil change. The car needed that anyways. And now, even though there's been a bunch of other things, we're gonna do that mount. So I just wanted to give you guys an update. Extra mile and then there's more work. Extra mile and now it's late extra mile even more and that's the difference between people who do things out of passion and people who do things because it's a job uh, kit and all the guys here at project import are the people who do it not just because they love it but they live and breathe it they're racers they're drivers they're mechanics they're builders they're everything so you know whether it be your mom's you know soccer van uh, a cadillac a bent they had a bentley in here the other day uh s2000s MR2s, 240s, VQs, K-series, it doesn't matter. They can do any of it. And um, from big to little jobs, all right? So this isn't an oil change place. You wanna do something major, they can do it. But here we are with this. We'll talk about this later. I'm borrowing my, my friend Matt's uh, Advan RG2. So big shout out to Matt Russell, because I'm kind of borrowing these. Uh, the silver on silver is nice, but I don't know. We'll figure out what the final wheels are. But yeah, that's where we are, guys. So let's go ahead and get this mount in. And he's going to align it. There will be this massive weight off my shoulders. Big shout out. And making this shit happen, so. All right, you guys, so after the string alignment by Kiet at Project Import, I'm bringing it over here to my friends at Reliable Tire. They are a family-owned business. It's a father and a son, and they have a cousin working here as well, one of their aunts. And it's just really one of those businesses, local, support local, support small business. And that's what I try to live by. I've known Brian. Uh, who's actually driving the car up right now. I've known Brian for a long time. He's actually an OG car head and uh, he's a very good detailer. He's owned Hondas, M3s. He's owned all kinds of stuff, but Brian's a good dude. He's gonna do a digital alignment and to make sure we're all good. He had killed it at Project Import with the string alignment, but we're about to get the digital one, dial it in and make sure we're all situated after changing the suspension, you know, adjusting the tie rod. So my boy Brian right now is about to get it. Let's see where we are as far as the specs on the toe and the camber. So what you see so far, camber is pretty equal, negative 0.78, negative 0.74, and my toe, 0 0.3 and 0.35. Hey, that's pretty, I mean, that's kind of cool that it's pretty equal. Caster's off a quarter to the left, it's good. Okay, all right. So, hey, shout out to Kiet for the string alignment, but we're gonna get it all as close as possible with the homie Brandon at Reliable Tire right here.
right, so Brian just adjusted it two rounds actually to make sure. And this is about where we are right now. So point, negative 0.7 there, negative 0 0.72, 0 0.74. The caster is almost equal. Toe is damn near at zero in the front. Now the rear, we got perfectly even negative camber and, and almost perfectly zeroed out toe. I do need to install rear camber uh, adjustment kit in the rear and something to adjust in the front. But uh, truthfully, I'm good with that. Do the tire rotations every other oil change? Every oil change. Every oil change? Shout out to the homie, old A, hey, MTK Commander. If you guys know about that though, if you know about that, let me know. But shout out to Reliable Tire, father, son, family business, support local, support small business. Uh, shout out to them for letting me get under the rack with them and show you guys, you know, a digital alignment using some of the newer technology. Once again, big shout out to Kia and Project Import for getting everything situated, doing it the string way to get me safe and comfortable to drive, finalize it this way. So I appreciate you guys. Are you ready?